Well, hello, this is Margie Bartles with Eastern Panhandle Board of Realtors, instructor extraordinaire, and I have a good student with me, Dawn Dodson. She has some questions for me today about the contingencies document. Hey, Dawn Dodson here. Hey, Margie, I am always uh, interested in understanding some of the underlying details of the contingencies. And I always wonder, do I have to explain every single one of those contingencies to my clients? Well, I think what you want to do, Dawn, is you want to make certain that the client understands what they've asked for or what they're really willing not to, to look at. And the area that gets probably the most questions is the home inspection area. Mm -hmm. um, the one area of the home inspection that is absolutely probably newer in the last couple of years mm -hmm. is that area on as is with right in, without inspection and as is with right to terminate. Do you use those? Well, you know, I try to because I think that it's important to understand. And then the problem is sometimes we get confused about which one is the right one. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And I'll call your attention to page one of that contingencies document and the, the preprint bold at the top that says, by selecting 1A or B, below the seller is relieved of any inspection remediation. Seller doesn't have to do any work in those. And that's great for the seller, Indeed. but what happens to the buyer? And that's always an issue. <clears throat> so you want the buyer to make certain they get all their questions answered before they commit to how they're going to do inspections. Okay. So if I ask for a home inspection with right to terminate, then that just means all I'm getting is the home inspection for the client? Indeed, if you fill out number two on the contingencies, which is in individual inspection contingencies, you can indeed do an as-is home inspection and right to, con to terminate, but you can add other inspections after, after that contingency. A lot of agents don't realize that the other inspections in the contingencies areas indicate that the seller will do work. And so that's the reason anything after number two in that contingencies indicates the seller may fix some things, but one, A and B, indicates the seller is not doing any remediation for anything. Okay, that's good. And now it's clear to me. Okay, that's always good to hear. The other thing that I do want to call your attention to, particularly with a termite inspection or a, or a, a well and septic inspection, is it talks about if there are issues with either of those inspections, the seller is going to actually take care of whatever the issue remediation may be. Okay. Yeah. And that's a good, more good information. So, um, what is the difference uh, between um, the right to terminate? If I have a, if I have a client and we get right to the last day. What should I do if they haven't made up their mind yet? I think if you if your if your buyer if you're working with the buyer mm -hmm. if your buyer hasn't made up their mind whether they're going to terminate that contingency or do an inspection, they need to understand the default of this document is if they don't do it, they're in. Okay. So this document so they don't have any choice. That's right. They mm -hmm. either don't do the inspection or they do it, but this this contingency area defaults to the buyer will proceed. Okay. How about if they do have a home inspection and they want to negotiate, but the seller's unwilling to do anything? The reality is the buyer and the seller determine those issues. Even with an as is with right to terminate, there are instances where a seller may say, I will do some remediation. A real good case in point, is if it's a latent material defect. Oh. Okay. Because think about this, if it's a latent material defect, the seller's going to have to disclose or fix it for any buyer. Mm -hmm. So that changes things for the seller. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. So Margie, when we talk about termite, there's a blank line at the end that you can put a number in. So what do you what do you think's best to put in there? I think this is a discussion you want to have with your broker because obviously they're your trainer. But the other thing that, I, that I'll that i talk with you about is it, it says any extermination or repairs for damage identified in the report will be made at the seller's expense with a maximum cost not to exceed X. 
One of the areas I talk about in class sometimes is we actually had a termite damage report come in for $25,000. Oh my. You know, now that's obviously the largest we've ever had come in, mm -hmm. but indeed you want to make certain that your seller isn't obligated for a tremendous sum of money by the document they're signing. Mm -hmm. So I think you, you might want to make some determination on what would a, ter what a termite uh, a treatment cost and then do you believe there's any damage yeah. so I think you, you really need to think that through particularly in response to whether you're representing the buyer or the seller yeah yeah because if you're representing the seller and it's kind of open-ended or it says something like um, repairs any and all repairs or whatever I mean it could sink the whole deal for the, for, the, for the seller and then the buyer could just be playing yeah. out of it absolutely yeah and I have had some students ask well what if the amount of dollars in there doesn't cover the amount of the termite treatment well I guess then we'd have to go back to the table and renegotiate and I think that that's exactly mm -hmm. what I would recommend yeah makes sense makes sense to me sure and so <clears throat> part of the uh, contingencies, it's always a little bit confusing as the um, property restrictions. So there could be deed restrictions, there could be covenants and restrictions, and I think we need to have a broader understanding of that uh, item 12 in the contingencies. The reality in, in the addition of number 12 in the contingencies was letting the buyer know that there are restrictions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the due diligence area really asks the buyer to get their restrictions from the attorney or the courthouse or the seller or somebody other than the licensee, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But what we want to make certain of is if the buyer has, you know, maybe they have a need that they want to park a 28-foot RV in the driveway. You know, the reality is somebody needs to determine can they do that and we don't want that somebody to be you right yes especially there's so many people that want to have chickens now indeed i don't know why because anyway but <clears throat> chickens are a big deal and a lot of places are just flat out they don't want chickens absolutely yeah. and so you know in the restrictions area you'll have a general idea what the buyer is going to do with the property maybe just live in it but maybe there are other things that they're really wondering about those are questions you always refer to the attorney. So these are questions that are really specifically for covenants and restrictions. Mm -hmm. But let's suppose that there's deed restrictions on whether you can have a 28 by 40 foot building or mm -hmm. anything like that. Mm -hmm. So how would, we, how would a consumer find that out? The reality is that the courthouse documents will talk about it, the deed itself, or their copy of the restrictions and indeed there are some deeds on properties that have no restrictions but the board attorney has indicated every deed that you'll see historically says and restrictions of record so it might seem like it doesn't have restrictions but only an attorney can tell you that and they might have to go way back indeed okay. indeed All right thank you there's this last portion of the contingencies that says general and I have a lot of times wondered what specifically might I be using general for well and Dawn you've been in my classes before so you know I've really limited you to about three lines there because I hate you to fill it in I know we're not allowed to practice law that's really a problem <laughs> if we do but a lot of times what I'm seeing in that area of the contingencies is maybe there's a specific roof inspection. Maybe there's a pool inspection. Okay. So it may be something that's very specific to that property. Um, what I would always caution you is don't get too wordy. What we all know is when you get real wordy is when there's really an issue. Mm -hmm. Less is more. Always. <laughs> Hi, it's always best for you to contact your own broker. I work very hard with agents and want them to do their best job, but I too have a broker that I have to consult, so always check with your broker before you fill out an, a document. Guys, we really appreciate you uh, listening to our YouTube rants today, and what I would also say is consult your broker with any questions. Your broker may have a different opinion than us, and that's just fine. And always remember, the Western Real Estate Commission really determines the law, not how you do your business, other than following the law. Take care. Thanks, Margie. You're welcome.